Hey YouTube, my wife found this rather dilapidated lamp table somewhere and immediately decided that it looked beautiful after I'd restored it to its former glory. This was mainly a job requiring a lot of elbow grease and a small amount of knowledge about applying a good varnish finish. Let's get in and have a look and see how I did it. My wife found another table that she'd like me to do up. And we've got some rather nasty looking stains here. A bit of roughness over the surface. The paint, varnish, stain, whatever was on it's all worn off on the top. Someone's been careless enough to put wet things down on it, so we've got a bit of a rough surface we're going to have to deal with. Got these stains which go deep into the grain of the wood. As you can see, or maybe you can't, I hope you can in the video, this looks like it's been made of pine and stained over to give it a darker colour. Got that typical pine grain to it. Thing to start with is to sand it all back to bare wood and see what we've got then to work with. I'm going to start off with some 220 grit glass paper. Now glass paper is not my favourite, but this has already been used, so it's not going to be too aggressive and will give me an idea just how I want to proceed with stripping this off. Well, I need to be a bit more aggressive than that, but I don't need to be as aggressive as a belt sander. That's going to gouge in, or at least it always does for me. I am going to get some coarser sandpaper and rip into this a little bit harder, then I'll drop back to the finer grits to smooth it off again. And I'll do that off camera. If you've watched any of my earlier videos, you've probably heard me express my hatred for working on the floor. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of choice in this case. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this on the video, but this bottom shelf here has got a, quite a bay this way in it. Uh, I think I might see if I can hide a couple of bits of angle line up in underneath there and pull it a bit straighter. If I cut them in a little bit from the edges, I don't think anyone will see them while the table's in place. And it will make me feel a little bit better about this because I don't like it being out of shape like that. This has got a tiny amount of bow in it as well, in the same direction coincidentally. I think I can pull that into place all right with some clamps and glue. Ah, yeah, that came off pretty quick. Now I need to do the inside of these legs and that will be all that really needs to be sanded back to the bare wood. I'll probably do the tops a little bit more. I'll put the camera off and take this somewhere else to do the inside of the legs where I can get at them. Alrighty, I've uh, done all the inside of the legs now. I'm just going to give these upper surfaces another run over. Yeah, you got another one or two papers I think. It is starting to come a little bit better in places. The big one is still pretty dark. The middle one's starting to disappear, and I think the other one's looking a little bit lighter. Making it better, I think the colour of these two, they might nearly hide with a bit of stain on it. That one there, different. Okay, there we go. That's probably about as good as I'll get that. Give this bottom a bit more. These ancient sandpapers not lasting very long. The glue's had it on these as well. 15 years old and cost 25 cents back then. Now things have gone up in price. Okay, I think that's probably as good as I can do in getting those marks out. These scallop pieces are not much in there to get off. So I'm just going over them by hand. What little varnish there was there, it's going to make much different. There we go. Clean that mess up and then I'll have to wait for a bit. We haven't had rain for months and months and months. All the grass is brown and that dry that it crunches underfoot. And then the day I come out to do this, it rains. I don't know what other people think, but I've never found that varnish works as well in wet weather. I always prefer to do it in a nice dry day. So now that I've got that all prepped, I'm going to put it aside and wait till we get a nice dry day. If the last few months have been any indication, that will be tomorrow. The next thing to do now is to varnish the table. I've got some stain and varnish that I'm going to use first until I get the colour as dark as my wife wants it. 
And then if it still needs some more coats, I'll go on with a clear varnish over that. Now I've got some mineral terps. I think it might be called mineral spirits in some other countries. I always like to wipe the wood down with that. It seems to open the pores a little bit and get any of the dust that's left over from sanding. It helps get that out of the pores of the wood. And I think it also helps the varnish to soak into the wood a bit. So I just go over everywhere that I'm about to paint. Pretty much every surface that I sand it. You can see on the rag that the dust is coming off. It always pays to watch YouTube videos, see what other people are doing, see if they've got any ideas that are better than yours. I've always painted varnish on with a good quality brush, not one of those cheap ones. For a varnish brush, I'll pay whatever it takes to get a good one. Because I've always found that gives the best results. But, there's a fellow I saw on YouTube the other day, who swears by a foam rubber brush. Says it gives him the best results. And I've never tried one, I didn't even know they existed to be honest. But while I was at the local hardware after seeing that, I had a bit of a look around and they did have some foam rubber brushes. They looked, well, they looked cheap and cheerful to be honest. And they were certainly cheap, it was two dollars for five I think. But, nothing ventured, nothing gained, so I bought them, and what I intend to do, I'll try the um, first coat with one. Worst case scenario, I'm going to have to sand it all off again, and start again if it's really bad. Or I could find a new way of doing it. I thought it was worth the experiment. It's only going to cost me two dollars and a little bit of time if it doesn't work. So, I'm okay with that. Let's put this away and let that dry for a minute and I can put the first coat on him. Ready to give these new foam brushes a try. And I think I said there's five in the packet. That's the packet there, I was wrong, there's only four. It actually says they're excellent for interior and exterior paint and varnishes, but don't use them for slack or lacquer. So they should suit this job all right. And as I said, the guy who I saw using similar brushes on YouTube swears by them. Let's see how I go. Now the stain colour the white picked is a jarrah. To be quite honest, it looks a good deal darker than it did when we saw it in the shop. Uh, put on lightly, it'll be alright. I think there'll only be one coat of this going on. I'll have to finish it off with clear varnish then. Uh, actually, by the time it's on, it looks about right. Oh, I did want a darkish sort of stain on this wood. I think she picked the colour perfectly for what she wants. Not sure how I'd like this brush. I'll have to wait, I think, until it's dried and see what the job looks like. Feels funny. Doesn't feel like what I'm normally used to using, and you know, that's just muscle memory. Uh, if I like it, I'll get used to it pretty quick. A little bit disconcerting that it does just feel different. One thing I'm finding I don't like about them is I put too much pressure on it, it ends up hitting whatever's inside the foam holding it together and that leaves a nasty mark in the paint which I've then got to go and work my way back through and you don't get that with a nice bristle brush. Although I'd have to have to say good good quality bristle brush that I was using costs about 30 times more than one of these brushes. I paid 20 to 30 dollars for a high quality brush and I got four of these for under three dollars. Pretty much makes these a disposable brush, hardly even worth the trouble of cleaning it up. Nice long even strokes still seems to be the go, regardless of what sort of brush you're using. Finding this um, foam brush feeling different now that it's all logged up with varnish. Seems to be somehow softer and harder to use. Makes it easier to go down and hit that bottom piece where it messes up the paint finish. I can't get an even coat now. Brush has gone a little bit soft on me. Very hard. Maybe the guy on YouTube that I saw has a better quality foam brush than I bought. This was all the hardware had. This brush is breaking already. Uh, certainly lacking in the quality department. You see that there? Not sure if you can, but the brush, is all, the foam's already broken. And that's why it's become too loose to use properly. I knew it felt different. I just didn't notice the break in it. Getting worse all the time. I'll have to, I'll have to ditch this in a minute. 
go and grab another one just to finish the job and I think all my future work on this will be done with a bristle brush. When the foam brush was new, when I first used it, I thought, oh, this isn't too bad. So it might not be too bad if you had something a little bit better quality. A bit of a race to know whether I'll finish this with this brush or whether I need to go and get another one before this one deteriorates too much more. Now, one thing about it, I don't need to worry about cleaning this brush because it certainly is a one-use brush. To be honest, I think I could have done a better job with the bristle brush. Now, that's not to say a foam brush wouldn't work if you spend a little bit more money on it. This was all I saw in the shop and I'm not terribly happy with it. Only fit for the bin when you used it. Alright, emergency measures are called for. Really unhappy with how that foam brush worked. Ended up leaving big dribbles here and there. So I've got a clean rag soaked in turps. This is the solvent for this paint. I'm going along just trying to undo some of the damage so that I don't have to actually sand the whole thing back again. Okay, I think that's got it. I've got a fair hope of recovering that with a light coat of Jara, I guess. Well, I've had my experiment with foam brushes and I don't think I'll be using them again. I'll stick with paying what it takes to get a good brush and keep it exclusively for varnish, as I always have. And I'm back to a bristle brush and this time I'm just going to go over this with a maple stain and varnish. I just want to darken it up a little bit from where we're at, but I don't want to go uh, double K to the jarra because that'll make it too dark. This is a slightly lighter shade of stain and will hopefully that's be about right for this job. Done for now, I'll let that dry. My standard practice when I varnish anything is to give it a sand back clean coat with some wet and dry sandpaper, using mineral turps as a wetting agent rather than water. I just find that mineral turps works a little bit better on varnish for some reason, at least it seems to. The whole purpose of sanding between coats is to knock off the microscopic little bumps that get in the varnish. I'm not sure what causes them, could be a little bit of dust in the air or just bubble in the varnish. But if you run your fingers over it, you can just barely feel them. And I find that it's better to knock them off between coats so that you get a nice shiny finish in the end. And once I've finished sanding, I'll take a clean rag and wet it down with turps and use that to wipe the varnish dust off that I've just created by the sanding. Alright, that's that. I think that might be the last coat I need. I'll check it out when it's dry. But I think another run over that would be really, really fine. A uh, thousand or twelve hundred grit wet and dry. And then a bit of furniture polish on it and it should look lovely. Well, thanks for watching this video. If nothing else, you've learnt that not all foam brushes are created equal. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please visit my channel or browse to my website. Until next time.